It is August, which means we're in the final stretch of the federal conservative leadership campaign. There are just 17 days left for party members to get their votes in. The four candidates are working to get as many votes as possible in the last few days, and we've reached out to each of them to hear their final pitch to voters. Today, we're joined by Leslyn Lewis. We reached her in Toronto. Welcome back to the program, Leslyn Lewis. Thank you for being with us. I want to start by asking, now you missed that debate last week because of health concerns, so are you feeling better now? Oh, yes, I'm feeling better now. Thank okay. you for asking. Well, I do want to ask a little bit about what happened when you pulled out of this debate because Peter McKay responded to news that you wouldn't be part of the debate by removing himself. He was accused of abandoning the debate by the debate organizers. I wonder, since this all did sort of center around your, your own presence at the debate, how do you feel about that? Do you think Mr. McKay did the right thing? Well, I can't really speak for what Mr. McKay did. He, I have to take his, his word at face value that he was doing it because he thought that he wanted a fair debate with all of the contestants. And so I, I respect him for his decision, but he makes his own decisions. Um, I know that we, we tried everything for us to be there. And, um, you know, perhaps without COVID and the, the risk of infection and, um, you know, just the fact that I was running a high fever um, all of these things, my doctor was very, very concerned um, for my safety, my risk. And so, you know, we, we waited as long as we could. We gave them heads up days before that I wasn't feeling well, but we were optimistic that I would be able to, mm -hmm. to get back. the fever wasn't breaking. I do want to talk about debating in general. Obviously, uh, you're running to be leader of the Conservative Party and ultimately the Prime Minister. But in the official party debates, you struggled certainly in French. Uh, I was looking over the reviews of the English debate. Uh, certainly in some of the mainstream publications, I didn't see any, any, any reviews that said you knocked it out of the park. I wonder if you truly, how do you convince Conservative members that you're ready to take on Justin Trudeau when you struggled debating members of your own party? Well, I didn't struggle debating members of my own party. With the French debate, I was told not to do it because I only had 23 hours of French lesson. And I did that out of respect to the people of Quebec because I, I wanted them to see that their language is important to me and that I was going to show up and respect them and, and give it my best effort. So I put a lot of time in learning about how to pronounce the words and, and just so that I, was, I would be able to read it. And if you watch the debate, you will see that all three of the um, candidates agreed with me. We even did a clip on it with how many times they agreed with me. So I think that sometimes the media wants to favor um, who they believe are the front runners, and so they see what they want to see. But when you watch the preview of the de the review of the debates, you will see that they were all in agreement with me, and that tells you that my positions were landing, and that I had sound convictions, and that I'm a very good debater. I have no problem with debating. I've litigated for a living, and so I have no problem with doing that. Okay, well, let's move on to uh, what has been really the principal political issue in the country over the past few weeks, which is, of course, uh, the situation involving this contract that was given to uh, the We Charity, the We Charity Foundation. In terms of what's happening federally right now, you know, we've seen calls from the Bloc Québécois saying that the Prime Minister needs to at least temporarily step aside. There have been calls for the Finance Minister to resign. I wonder on those issues in particular, where do you stand? Do you think that this is the moment where the Prime Minister should step, step aside or that Minister Morneau ought to resign? Well, I do believe that when you betray trust to that extent, that you should you should do the honorable thing and step down. I also but believe that, that includes. A, are you saying the prime minister should step down? That's what you're calling for. Well, I'm saying that I I believe that he if the evidence shows that what we are seeing is correct, then I believe that he has lost trust of the people. So what? And, so just I just it, it is a big thing to ask for the prime minister to step down. So I just want to be crystal clear about what it is that you're saying. You're saying if the evidence is what it shows. What piece of evidence are you, will this hinge on for you or does this hinge on for you? Well, that's up to his, his party will decide what's, what's best moving forward. It's really and truly what we have to look at political actors is, is ensuring accountability. And for us who are in the opposition, it's a, it's a situation of how do we not erode um, the voters' rights to have who they, they voted for in, in, um, you know, in charge. It, and it's really an issue of taking it back to the voters, bringing out the evidence, making sure it's, it's the voters that will vote him out in, in the long run. And so it, it might be time for, for us to, to cast our votes on that. Okay, well, that, and I'm, it's interesting that you bring that up because at the beginning of this ca campaign, if people can cast their minds back 
to the pre-COVID era. Uh, one of the things that made you stand out in your early comments were that some of the other participants in the leadership race said that if they were to win, they would seek to topple the government in September. But this was before COVID. It was certainly before the events around We Charity. You had said you didn't think that that was appropriate. Now, of course, it's a minority parliament. The Conservatives alone cannot topple the government. But I wonder where you stand now. Do you, do you think that it is time for, for an election once the new Conservative leader is chosen? Well, like I said, I would that's something that I would I would converse with my caucus on and we would decide on how to move forward. Um, and I think at this point that it's very important that we make sure that the facts of the investigation of we come out so that Canadians have a full record of what transpired so that when they're going um, to vote, that they are voting on full information. I think that that is the, the most important thing right now. We need full details of the scandal. We need the prime minister to come clean so that Canadians understand what happened. And I think the best way he to do that is He has testified before committee. Oh, inquiry. I think that what we need is to have some sort of form of public inquiry because we've seen that the questioning um, has, has not led to... Um, so many of those questions weren't answered sufficiently. And so we need a mechanism by which we're going to force some answers. And so the Canadian public will hear what really transpired. I, I Lots to dig into there, but I do want to make sure we talk touch on at least one more policy area. It's one I haven't really heard you, I personally haven't heard you discuss at length. I was looking at your foreign aid policy on your website, and it states, I'm going to quote your website here, we need to change our foreign aid policies to focus on countries that actually need it. I believe we need to prioritize Canadian humanitarian needs, such as ensuring clean drinking water is available on every First Nations reserve in Canada, above sending funds overseas how much are you thinking about cutting foreign aid spending by transferring that money and how would you decide where to cut well with covid there's we would have to reassess everything so we have to look at um what exactly what our budget is and with the new realities we have to do an, an assessment that's one of the problems with COVID that we didn't have an impact assessment so the next government going in will not really know um, what they're going to confront I think it's a national disgrace to send monies overseas for various projects such as drinking water when we here in Canada do not have clean drinking water on First Nations reserves and I would like to see, a re see real action taste take place and I would like to see First Nations reserves with clean drinking water. So, so that, that, that is something the current government has been working on is restoring clean drinking water to First Nations communities across the country. You're saying no money to foreign countries for clean drinking water while we're working on that here in Canada? No, that's not what I said. I didn't say no money. I said that we are going to reassess things and that our First, Nation, First Nations Reserves clean drinking water is going to become a top priority, which I do not feel that it is at this moment. Okay, uh, I do. We're, we are right out of time, but I would regret if I didn't ask you. I, I'm sure you feel good about your chances right now. But if you don't win uh, a couple of weeks from now, I wonder, are you committed to, to sticking around in federal politics? Will you run for office in the next election? Well, I believe that my impact has been so profound. I feel that we have a very strong chance of winning. And because of the impact that I've made, I would absolutely stick around because I believe I have a lot to contribute to this party and to this country. Okay. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us about it today. Leslie Lewis. Okay. Thank you. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.